What up? And welcome back to the Creative Differences Podcast. I'm Dallas, and as a 90s baby who grew up watching Spider-Man, I'm elated after seeing Venom Let There Be Carnage. I'm Colin, and it is with, like, the deepest sense of shame that I haven't seen this movie yet. <laughs> and I'm Demi, and I'm only here for one talking point. Welcome to another episode of Creative Differences, your one-stop shop for movie reviews, Fancast Fridays, Throwback Thursdays, and a number of other pop culture related items. Today, if you could not guess, we are reviewing, well, Dallas is reviewing mm-hmm. Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Yes, I am. I'm sorry, Demi, do you mean to tell me that you did not see this masterpiece of cinema? Mm. I'm the only one who saw it. I absolutely did not Dallas, see I'm so movie. sorry. I feel like I let you down. It's okay. You were staying safe. If you're wondering where Gabby is, she went to find Venom. <laughs> Still recovering. Before we get into this episode, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, a giant red monster will attack you with his tongue. And for most of you, I assume that's bad. Most of you. Most of you. Most of you. (laughs) For people like me in Dallas, it's bad. Yeah. Half of the podcast. We are a a podcast divided. Anyway, let's get it. (laughs) Dallas. Venom. Uh, Top of the morning. (laughs) All right. Venom, Let There Be Carnage, directed by Andy Serkis. You know Andy Serkis. He directed Mowgli, Legend of the Jungle, and he did motion capture for everybody and their mama. It is written by Kelly Marcel, who, like I told you last week, wrote Saving Mr. Banks, wrote Fifty Shades of Grey, and did the story for Cruella. I want to say that she stepped her game up since Fifty Shades, but it wouldn't be fair because I haven't actually seen Fifty Shades, so I can't actually judge it. Demi, have you seen it? I think the only person on this podcast who has seen it is Gabby, and she's not here. Gracious, Gabby. Can't even make a joke about where you are because then Demi will have to bleep it again. Hm. Saving Mr. Banks... And Cruella are good movies, in my opinion. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Maybe Disney is like her thing. And tongue monsters. The movie stars Tom Hardy, Woody Harrelson, Naomi Harris, Woody Harrelson, and Tom Hardy. Yes, I did that joke last week. It still works. The IMDb summary states, Eddie Brock attempts to reignite his career by interviewing serial killer Cletus Cassidy, who becomes the host of the symbiote Carnage and escapes prison after a failed execution. Yep. So, ah, man, I love this movie so much. It's so... Okay, so Colin, yeah. you remember uh, last time I talked about the issues I had with the first one. Uh-huh. Where basically, the villain's not super interesting, mm-hmm. and it takes Venom too long to Venom. Okay. And I said that this movie would probably fix both of those. Uh-huh. And it does, because obviously Venom's there from the jump, and Carnage is so much better than Riot. Okay, I have a question, I guess, about that. Mm. Is Carnage better than Riot because Carnage is better than Riot? Or is Carnage better than Riot because you love Carnage? Because to me, watching the trailers, I was like, this looks like the first one. He's fighting a version of himself. Yeah. I don't understand why people like Carnage. Right. He's just another symbiote. So for that, I would say Carnage, the symbiote, is better than Riot. And Cletus Cassidy, the character, is better than Carlton Drake. Mm, okay. So across the board, it's more interesting. Cool, cool, cool. And that's no disrespect to Riz Ahmed. Like, Woody had more to work with. But also Woody killed it. Even the stuff that was like a minor issue, like I didn't really feel Eddie and Anne's chemistry a lot, nor did I really care about their relationship. She was kind of mad for me last time, but she's so much better this time. Oh, cool. Like all the side characters. Dan is still- I was going to ask. (laughs) Dan is such a treasure. He's hilarious. Anne is really funny, and she's not in it a whole lot. Obviously, you know, she's not with Eddie. But she has some stuff to do. There's a really weird- uh, (laughs) <laughs> I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it. Don't worry about it. And uh, Mrs. Chen, she even gets some stuff to do. What? And she's great. I love her. There's a scene about a chocolate shrimp not showing up one time. And, you know, that's Venom's whole thing. Mm. But it's great. She's great. Everybody's great. Story-wise, there's more focus on Eddie and Venom's relationship. Oh, good. Yeah, I know that's your whole thing. Mm-hmm. And it adds a nice layer to it because even as someone who loves the first movie, the story is just, oh, no, there's a bad guy. We got to stop the bad guy. Yep. But... This is, we have this relationship between our two main characters, but also, yeah, there's a serial killer on the loose. And that story is interesting, too, because Cletus is an interesting character in that he doesn't just work for his antagonistic relationship to Eddie. Like, he's his own character. He has his Mm -hmm. own goals. Carnage, the symbiote, is another separate character that has its own goals. Oh, okay. And they kind of have to work together, so it's not just one big bat like i don't want to keep comparing to the first well like riot didn't have a personality it felt yeah so carnage immediately does okay 
Ah, oh, it's so good. Woody Harrelson's fantastic. Cletus, he's uh, not wearing the Party City wig, right? He's not wearing the Party City wig. They, they toned down the hair. But as far as his performance goes, he went all out, full on serial killer. The voice, the mannerisms, everything's just, just fire. There's a, a love story between him and uh, Naomi Harris's character, Francis, a.k.a. Shriek. I hate to say it, but their kind of relationship goes in a really... <laughs> Hear me out. Yeah, we are both looking at him real weird right now. Hear me out. Murder aside. You on some Gabby shit right now. Murder here's, aside. Here's the thing. If you can... God, I hate to say it. Because I feel the same way about Darling and Buddy from Baby Driver, who are also crazy murderers. Right. So. And this is the thing about that. It's not like... What's up, Colin? I just want to say, for the record, I don't... I don't I don't got any like ships where like, oh, they're murderers. I don't do that. Murder is no. Murder's bad. Right. We're talking about their We're relationship. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is about their love for each other. Not their love for murder. Right, but it's aside. it's it's the fact that one or both of them is loving a murderer. Colin, you gotta find me. someone who shares your passions in life. They share each other's passions in life. One of those passions is murder. It's a good relationship. This just in, Dallas endorses murder. No, 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 no. That's not what he said at I all. I endorse finding someone who shares your passion. And if that passion is murder, Dallas is fine with it. That's I mean, I'm not fine with that That's being kind of your passion, like. but mm-hmm. I'm fine with a relationship. Why don't you believe in love, Colin? <laughs> Let people be happy. <laughs> but no, Naomi Harris, she kills it as always. I was worried that she wouldn't have a lot to do because in the trailer, she has no line. But she does. She is every bit as nuts as Cletus. She is terrifying in her own way. She apparently has a thing for tentacle monsters. So I know some of y'all out there and one of you in here will feel seen by that. You guys will relate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just have such a pure love. I'm sorry, Colin. I, I know it bothers you, but just watch the movie. You'll like it. Um, okay. <laughs> Probably won't like their romance, but he'll like it. But yeah. And of course, Eddie and Venom are the main draw again. Tom Hardy kills it again. He continues to shine. They went a little bit more over the top with Venom's personality. There's a lot of jokes that work for me, and there are a few that don't. Also, it was kind of hard to understand Venom. They kind of, I don't know if they put more effects on his voice. He does sound a little bit garbly in the trailer. Yeah. They, like, amped it up a little bit, which I feel like they didn't need, because he had a great voice in the first one already. He did, yeah. And... I don't know if they just wanted to make him sound more alien or yeah. what. That trailer, I'd be like, what is he saying? Right. There's certain scenes in the trailer. I don't know if yeah, this he's might speaking be one English. that I wait to see it um, like on streaming just for subtitles. For the captions. Yeah. Yeah. And I would love to watch it again with those because, oh, that's what Venom was saying. Mm. But um, yeah, they have their little relationship spats like you saw in the trailer. Mm-hmm. It's hilarious. Venom's reactions to everyone else around Eddie because now we get that more when Eddie's dealing with someone you can hear Venom in his head talking and saying how he feels about it oh nice and Venom is just he's so immature I love him okay I don't want specifics okay but does this movie reach the height of the lobster tank scene (laughs) can any movie actually reach that (laughs) well okay yeah that was uh, cinematic gold especially because Tom Hardy improv that so yeah he's just the best but I don't know specifically there's a scene in this one that stands out the way that one does, Mm -hmm. but there are scenes that stand out in other ways. Okay, cool. So that's fantastic. Um, Also, shout out to Officer Mulligan. He's not a very interesting character, but he's played by Stephen Graham, so I like him. Yeah. Oh, one thing I want to say before I get off of, you know, Venom. That's an interesting way to phrase that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. But we're rolling with it. We're here. This is where we are now. The symbiotes still look great. Their fight scene is so much better than Venom versus Riot. I feel like being able to tell the difference between the two would help. Yeah. Yes. Not even just the colors, but the way they use them. Oh, okay. Because Carnage, for anybody who knows the comics, Carnage is very reliant on stabby things, for lack of a better term. He uses blades, axes, knives. He's very I will say that shot in the trailer is very cool. Which one? The one of him, like, by the window? In, on the window. Yeah. yeah. The cross sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Just, like, the visuals, like, the way that, they have subtle differences, like the way that uh, Cletus turns into Carnage versus the way that Eddie oh, turns yeah, into Oh, yeah, he, like, destroys Cletus. Yeah, he kind of gets ripped apart, and there's, like, huh. a very violent... Visceral. Yeah, way to show it. Interesting. 
the visuals are so good. Man, Cletus, it sounds like this movie fucks. I really need to see it. Yes, almost literally, because Carnage tongued someone to death, and I'm not going to go into detail about that. I'm just going to leave you it's with that. It's in the that. trailer. Y'all saw the trailer? Yeah, but Colin didn't, so I'm just going to leave Colin with whatever that means to him. And, yeah, it's great. Cletus was rocking those red suits. He looked great. The performances are great. It's so much fun. Uh, if you like the first one, I definitely recommend it. So, Colin, that's all you. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's a great time. And also, you know, PG-13 movies like to use their one F-bomb. Yes. They use it so well. Like, <laughs> Kayla and I were just dying when they did it. It was such a great scene. Yeah, it's good. The mid credit scene is as great as everyone has been saying it is. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. You probably already heard about it. Just know it's fantastic. We all cheered. And I think that's all I had to say. Yeah. Tongues and Monsters. Part two. It's a good time. Colin, you'll enjoy it. I'm excited to see it. <laughs> all right. So what you've been watching, what you've been doing, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is our middle section. We change the name of it every so often. So, you know. Yeah. More it recently, works. it's just been what you're watching, what you're doing. But I like the blah, 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 blah. That's this week's version. Mm -hmm. Do you want to start since you've been quiet? Uh, yeah, I'll start. I actually, yeah, this is not the talking point I was talking about in the welcome, <laughs> but Dallas needs somebody else to talk about something. <laughs> so I just finished the final season of Dear White People, which hey. is a show that I love, especially because I loved the movie uh, and still love it to this day. This season is just so, for me, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this season. I know a lot of people out there don't because uh, it's a musical. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. The entire season is a musical. And I personally am one of those people who love when TV shows do like a musical episode. Right. So when I found out they were doing an entire musical season, I was like, this is fantastic. It's a very bold choice, especially to end your show with it. I was reading uh, an interview with the writers um, about why they made that decision. Yeah. And just, they apparently like both love um, Justin Simeon and... Um, Jacqueline Marcel, I believe is her name. I could be wrong. But they're both huge fans of musicals. Okay. Dear White People is already a show where they do surreal things anyway. Yeah. As we've seen, you know, I'm like my brain automatically goes to that scene where I think Gabe is trying to figure out if Sam ha was sleeping with um Reggie. With Reggie. Mm -hmm. And remember it like he would start imagining like different old movie posters oh, yeah. and stuff that <laughs> for that them to be in. Yeah. So like it, they do stuff like that all the time. This time it was just like, all right, now right. you're just gonna now be a music. musical. And they were talking about how, you know, this show is all about identity and about people who are trying to find their voices and find ways to express themselves. And musicals are one of the purest ways of doing that because when people need to express themselves, what do they do? They stop and they sing. Yeah. I enjoyed that aspect of the show. I thought it was very interesting. Also, I love 90s music, so I definitely was not upset about that because it was just basically a 90s, early 2000s musical. I dig it. Is it all, so it's jukebox musical? The whole? Yeah, it's a jukebox okay. musical. They have Got one it. song that was originally, that was written specifically for the show. Okay. But yeah, I just, I've always really loved the show. I've loved the commentary that they've made. I think Sam White is the character that I've related to most in life, just in general. I can see that. Um. One of the main differences is that I feel like she started off the show a little bit more revolutionary, I guess. Okay. I would say she's yeah, a lot she's more aggressive. Fight the powers that be in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I am, but not to that <laughs> level. Right. Um, but also, and I, I, I don't relate to the fact that she's mixed. I am not. <laughs> but, but I do relate to really trying to represent like your people and also trying to do it through your art. She is also a filmmaker like I am. That's true. She's more of an artsy filmmaker than I am, mm. but she's also a filmmaker. And watching her progress as a character, I feel like she's gone through a similar progression in life in like her philosophies and her beliefs that I have. Okay. And that she shares very similar fears and things that she's really insecure about. Like I'm like, whoa, why am I on screen? <laughs> I don't like it right now. Yeah, I was watching the last three episodes last night, and there were a few things that happened on the show where I was just like, God, I just, I really relate to you, and I totally understand what you're thinking right now. You also um, both like white boys. So that's a, a minor thing, but it is something you share. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> How is, uh, what's his name, Lionel in this season? Because he's one of my favorite characters. Oh, so another thing that I really like about this season is that it's 
framed very differently from the rest of the show. Okay. So the rest of the show, we were just watching it, college students going through their college life. Yeah. This time around, we're watching them as adults. Right. And they are looking back at what happened their senior year of college. Okay, that's what I thought from the trailer. It looked like in a kind of future. Yeah, it's a futuristic sort of thing. They also <laughs> make use of the fact that we've been in a quarantine and a pandemic this whole time. That is definitely a huge part of the season as well as part of their framing. But yeah, Lionel is a big part. The show really makes it a big deal that Lionel and Sam are the two most important pieces of the show. They are... Okay, right. That makes sense. They're the way that we view the show. And they, right. they make it even more obvious in this season. Like, they basically just say it like yeah. in the show. Like, yo, like we have been watching the show through the lens of these two people mm-hmm. and their journey. But even though we've also been watching everybody else's journey. But, like, it's, you know, these two are our centerpieces. So they are very, very much important this season. Lionel has a very important storyline where I feel I feel like everybody kind of goes through a storyline this season where it's it's gotten to the point where it's like, okay, so not only am I black, what else is my identity outside of this? Right. So for Lionel, it's yes, I am black. Now I also have to express the gay part of my identity as well and what that means. I feel like he's been doing that. For like four seasons. But also, I feel like it's like it's been in stages. I know the first season is definitely okay, accepting that part of himself. Also, the first season was him trying to come to terms with that, like, yo, bro, you are black. Right. But then season two, right, you're with this guy. Oh no, he sucks. You're with this guy. Oh no, he might yeah. be all right. Ugh. And then season three, he's like, Zane for the non-black audience zane is a romance novel writer oh. sorry what yes oh, i yeah, know yeah. of zane I'm oh you know zane? To, yeah because uh in middle school or high school mm. so people used to bring it yeah they used to bring Fair. that book into class yeah yeah i remember those days yeah he goes through like a zane phase in season oh no no three. it's not just a phase he's continuing to write those in season four as well okay interesting i, I am intrigued i <laughs> did not care for it but i don't know i think it was just something about the way you remember that voice he was using when like his like little audio book? Yeah, voice? I think so. Yeah, it was yeah, so yeah. extra and I hated it. But I don't know. That's not as I, big of a part this time around. Right. But it is something that, you know, yeah, it's a thing that he does. Yeah. Um this time around he also has like, you know, somebody that he's actually in love with. He actually has a long term relationship in this okay. season. And so you watch how that's also been impacting uh, like that comes into conflict with his identity as well. Right, 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 right. So But yeah, I just think I think the character work this season was really well done. Nice. Um, it ends on a realistic but hopeful note, I would say. Mm, okay. There, they, yeah. I, can, I could, like, because you haven't watched it yet, and no. I can't wait until you do, because when you get to the end of the season, it's, it's, whoo, boy. <laughs> also, make sure that you are watching the credits of every episode, because those okay. are actually part of the episode as well, and not just the credits. Nice. Which I realized a few episodes in. Which I always do, because the credit music always slaps no credit music this time around what yeah this is quiet it's like no it's not Listen, well, quiet it's, their it's, music budget all got put into the episodes themselves <laughs> that's fair but man i wanted it's a musical man i used to watch that show with my phone on shazam <laughs> like when the credits hit i'm like what song is this all right got it <laughs> same with on my block netflix yeah. has some really good credits music yeah everybody's got a really interesting storyline this time around i think a lot of people probably didn't like the season as much because of the musical aspect but right. i enjoyed it yeah, i had it's not a fun everybody. time i love dear white people and i've had a lot of fun watching it over the past four seasons it's been it's a, a lot fun of show. fun and i'm so happy to have sam white because sam white really is like the fictional to me me yeah, yeah. <laughs> More so than any other character I've ever seen on screen, Sam is definitely like a fictional version of me. Speaking of white, does Gabe rap? Does Gabe rap in this season? Does he? He sings. Does he rap? I'm trying to remember if he actually raps. Okay. He, he might. I feel weird because Gabe has always been one of my favorite characters, but it's just on this show, I don't want to be like, oh, my favorite character is the white boy. It's like <laughs> if you watch Black Panther and your favorite character is uh, Agent Ross. Ross. From the Hobbit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is he from Lord of the Rings? Yeah, uh, is a- I like that actor. What is his name? Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman. Sorry, Martin. I love you. I don't know why I forgot your name. I Gabe is know. a really good character, though. Yeah, he's and, great. And his friction with Sam is mm-hmm. always very interesting to me. I think it also always creates some of the best conversations on the show is whenever he and Sam can't see eye to eye on something. Right. They <laughs> just argue. Well. <laughs> and now I guess they'll sing at each other. I can't wait for that. 
Yeah, there's a there's a scene where they sing. I'm just gonna spoil this part for you guys. There's a scene where they sing "Bye Bye Bye" to each other. Oh boy! And I loved it. <laughs> oh boy, that sounds. Funny. I was like, I wasn't expecting an in sync song, and not only that, but it's from my favorite character. Oh, what? Sure. Yeah, I look forward to it. But yeah, Dear White People season four. If you haven't watched the show, I would highly recommend it. It is so much fun. That would be my thoughts on Dear White People. <laughs> All right. Colin has nothing because he doesn't believe in this section. He just doesn't believe in telling us what he's up to. He just, yeah, just sits there. Oh, there was one quote from an episode that I was watching last night that Sam said that I had to write down because I was like, oof, yeah. oof. She said, um, how do you navigate a system that you are gaining power within, but deep down you want to destroy? And I was just like, I feel ooh, it. whoa. Tear it down. Yeah, um, Sam be hitting with the gems. <laughs> what you been watching, Dallas? All right, let's get weird. Recently, I watched a movie called Malignant. Oh, my God. I've been hearing some mixed reviews it's on that one. so... Let's just let's do the thing that I normally do. Malignant is directed by James Wan, who directed Saw, Insidious, The Conjuring, Fear of Seven, Aquaman. He's been busy. It's written by Akilah Cooper, who wrote Hellfest and worked on Luke Cage. Akilah got range. It stars Annabelle Wallace, Maddie Hassan, George Young. Oh, oh. I love Maddie. Yeah, she's great. She's my favorite character, but we'll get to that, maybe. I didn't write notes, really, so I'm just going <laughs> to ramble. George Young, uh, Nicole Brianna White, and Jake Abel's there, surprisingly enough. We have got to stop rambling during this section. This is exactly why the Dear White People section went on as long as it did. You don't have any notes for that? No. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, uh, malignant. All right, so uh, summary says, Madison is paralyzed by shocking visions of grisly murders. And her torment worsens as she discovers that these waking dreams are, in fact, terrifying realities. I'm sorry that I chuckled at Grizzly Murders, but the reason that I did is because a couple of weeks ago, Colin and I were looking at Box Office Mojo to see what movies were coming out. And as you know, Colin is a closeted horror fan. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. That's so, whenever true. I come across an upcoming horror movie, I'm like, Colin, you want to see that? So, we're looking at and I never do. And we look at the <laughs> summary. And it immediately brings up Grizzly Murders. So I'm like, oh, yeah, Colin, you want to see some Grizzly Murders? And no, I don't. And no, Have I seen this movie? No. Am I going to see this movie? No. It's fine. I don't think you'd like it. I don't know if I like it. I saw it like a week and a half ago. I still don't know if I like this movie. Ooh. I don't like it. Um, Sometimes those are the best ones. <laughs> yeah, not this one. So <laughs> it's not a bad movie. It's just James Wan has a reputation. In his horror, he does Insidious, The Conjuring, The House is Haunted. Get the kids. We got to go. That's kind of the vibe. And that's what I expected from this one. There's the trailer, you know, creepy little white girl. She's at a birthday party. She's talking to no one in particular. Maddie, who are you talking to? Just Gabriel. Maddie, who the hell is Gabriel? He's my friend. Nah, it's time to leave. Exactly. And I was like, okay, cool. We got a ghost. We got a demon. Whatever. Nah, dog. This was not that. And I commend him for doing something different. Because he really went for it, and I'm like, yo, I respect it. <sighs> but I did not really enjoy it. <laughs> it's funny. I was watching, and Kayla was in the room. She doesn't watch horror movies, but she was ready to scamper out. And we're watching the opening scene, and she was just like, why is the acting so bad? <laughs> but that's the thing. That's the thing, though. It feels like the beginning is an homage to old cheesy horror movies. There's like lightning and rain and all that stuff. But then the tone kind of switches. Like you think, okay, this is going to be like a weird, cheesy kind of vibe, even with the intro credits and everything like that. And then it just kind of gets normal. And I was like, so was the beginning bad on purpose or just bad? <laughs> but I'm like, there's no way that you saw that and was like, yeah, let's take this seriously. That was clearly intentional. But it just kind of weaves in and out of this kind of cheesy old school tone so it's like two movies like intermingling they're like mashed together this is a bunch of movies so it's a horror movie at first and then at one point it turns into like john wick and there's some jason Bourne. one of the characters has superpowers that i can't really explain it's like static shock there's a little bit of everything and i just it was just so much to keep up with and i couldn't i couldn't keep up story-wise i could keep up it's pretty simple Colin, you're, you play games. Have you played Soul Calibur? 
Um, not a lot, but I have played the games. Yeah, I saw that you made a reference. Yeah, do you know um, Valdo at all? The character, unfortunately, yes. Okay, yeah. Hate him. So, picture a horror movie, but Valdo is the antagonist. Like I, the way that it moves and like kind of hisses. Ooh, ooh all uh-uh, that. uh-uh, uh-uh. Fucking Which, rubber bones ass bitch. Exactly, no, yeah, that dude. <laughs> and I will say that James, you did your thing visually. He always does his thing. Very unsettling. There are scene transitions because Maddie will kind of for lack of a better term and spoiler redacted, let's say blackout and then be somewhere else. But the way they'll do it visually is they'll kind of dissolve the scene around her and then transition it to a new one. It looks super cool. That's cool. Yeah. But also, Gabriel, I was like, okay, that's Valdo. Why has he made a movie about Valdo? Why does he even know about Valdo? But uh, James, whatever you wanted to do, I guess you did it, man. <laughs> it's just super weird, and it's gross. There's a lot of body horror. That's not my bag. But uh, Maddie, Maddie Hassan, yeah, I believe she's so. great. She plays. It's confusing because the protagonist's name is Maddie, but she plays Maddie's sister. Her name is not Maddie. Something else. She's great. Yeah, she's one of those. She's like a ride or die for her sister. She pretty quickly believes her even though what she's saying is ridiculous like oh um i saw a murder happen i wasn't there but it definitely happened i saw it in my head and then maddie's like sorry sister maddie not main maddie oh god she's look gracious up, let's look up her character's name real quick name? i forgot it uh sydney there we go sydney's like all right cool let's go to the cops <laughs> and then they go to the cops and then we meet uh detective shaw the very friendly dude and his partner, angry black woman, and they're telling them what's going on. And Sydney is kind of trying to explain it, but obviously she can't. And then angry black woman is like, "This don't make no sense." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's I, a wild uh, one. Yeah, Maddie was really good on. She used to be on a show on what used to be ABC Family called uh, Twisted with Avin Jogia and Kylie Bunbury, who are also two actors I really like. I was wondering, I was like, why does Demi know this actress? I've never seen this person in my life, but ABC Family. <laughs> you know me. I know <laughs> most actors off the top of my head. Of course. But yeah, there's, so the movie, and this is probably the last thing I'll say about it, the movie leads you into this, you know there's going to be a reveal just because of how the movie is structured. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm ready for this reveal. It's going to answer all these questions. I have so many questions. It didn't answer nothing. It answered one question. <laughs> why does Gabriel move like Valdo from Soul Calibur? I got that answer. That was cool. Is it because he's actually Waldo from Soul Calibur? <laughs> I would have loved this movie if it turned out it was a Soul Calibur like, spinoff horror movie. But uh, yeah, it kind of left me with more questions than it answered, which is never fun for me. I can't say that James Wan missed because this feels like what he was going for. He was like, I'm just going to throw a little bit of everything in this bowl and make a weird-ass movie gumbo. And that's what he did. That's so. a choice. Yeah, go ahead, James. You did your thing. Well, the metaphor is a choice. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so go ahead, James. You got it. I don't know. I don't want to watch this anymore. Aquaman's coming out soon anyway. <laughs> They're filming right now. They are. I didn't like Aquaman. but <laughs> Hey, you might like Aquaman too, though. I might. I heard that Yahya we has more to, to do. hate to see somebody without a sense of taste, I tell you what. Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to, you know, get on a soapbox and say Aquaman is cinema. Okay. But... I think it's a good time. I'm slowly understanding Colin's taste in movies, slowly but surely. Man, maybe you can help me out. I still, I don't. This Listen, I a movie nothing. is good if I like it. It's bad if <laughs> I don't. That's it. Oh, easy. I got that. Same. Yeah, I don't know. Aquaman was, I think the thing for me is that everyone came out and was like, hey, man, it's not great, but it's fun. And it's funny and you'll enjoy it. Yeah. And I didn't because it didn't, it wasn't that fun for me. And huh. it wasn't that funny. So I was like, oh, Oh, man. that's how I feel about Venom. Right. So it's like, if you have a movie that everyone is saying, at least this stuff about it is enjoyable, and then that stuff for you don't hit, then it's like, well, that didn't look work. cool. <laughs> oh, man. News. We should get into news. We have news. We do have news. Yes. Speaking of Venom, Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he made a song for Venom. He made a song for Venom, too. That is our transition into... The one Super Bowl halftime show I've ever been excited for. Oh, my Lord. So the next Super Bowl halftime show is Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Dr. Dre, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick Lamar. Top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning. <laughs> okay, see, here's the thing, though. That's exactly how I need it to start. Just Kendrick <laughs> by himself on a dark set. You can't even see him because everything's dark. Yeah. And just 
top of the <laughs> like out of nowhere. I want everything to go dark, just darkness over the crowd, and then you just hear that. And then slowly a spotlight shines on Kendrick as he says, top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. I was looking back at the previous halftime shows and I was thinking, when is the last time I've been like really excited by the announcement? And they've had people that I like, but I've never seen an announcement that made me think, oh man, I really need to actually watch this one. It's so great and it's so black. Like <laughs> Mary J. Blige and Kendrick Lamar. Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre. Snoop, like, who allowed this? I am shocked. The NFL, apparently. I am shocked. NFL didn't even rock with black people like that. <laughs> like, this is so great. Ah, uh, they're going to win me back over. And, you know, in that vein, some I was listening to another podcast. I think it was Joe Budden's podcast. And they talked about, like, the moments that you can have in a show like this. Like, if Kendrick Lamar does all right on the Super Bowl stage, like that is gonna hit crazy because <laughs> see I feel like hmm. he should do um what's it DNA yeah I get well I don't know if I see he, what you mean. I don't know if he could yeah but I don't know because DNA is like I get like you know with the the excerpt from the Gerardo's punk ass and all that stuff but just for what all right became after it came out mm. like it kind of became the anthem like people at protests were chanting the lyrics to that song. Mm, like, okay. we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. And then the video comes out. It has that in it. So it's like, man, to do that after, like, the years that we've had recently. Like when, mm. uh, like when Beyonce came out, did her thing. Yeah. When the world suddenly realized, yes, Beyonce's black, guys. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, uh, that was. I think Kendrick was there for that one, too, actually. He might have been. Because I know people get pulled on stage a lot. This has the potential to have some really, really great moments. I'm going to have no hateration in this dancery. Like, oh, no hateration <laughs> in love. this dancery. It's going to be so black and so great. And it's in L.A. And I'm sure that's why this is the lineup. Like, oh, it's in L.A.? Yeah, it's in Inglewood. So you have the oh, Super Bowl shit. in Inglewood. You have Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Kendrick Lamar. Yo, traffic about to be hell out here, bro. <laughs> it's going to be so crazy. But Yo, yeah, people are is... just going to be here. <laughs> this is going to be like the most well-attended Super Bowl there's ever been. <laughs> People who don't even do anything with football just going to be like, no, I'm coming for the concert. Right. I'm going for the for the Snoop Dogg, Dr. Stray, Mary Stray Fly. They're not going to be in the stadium. They'll just be by the parking lot, kind of like what you do with the Rose oh, Bowl. Oh, the you tailgating? Right They'll be tailgating just trying to hear Ooh. the show. Ooh. Yeah. I am so excited. I'm actually going to watch this happen. Dallas show. is going to be on the Metro train so that he can be in the parking <laughs> lot to listen. In the parking lot. We're going to be all right. And also, I just, I like all these artists on their own. Like, yeah. Eminem's been rapping for like, 50 years. Dude has a thousand songs. Thanks to Dr. Dre. Right. And just him and Dr. Dre together, Snoop and Kendrick. Oh, it's so great. I'm so excited. I didn't know the Super Bowl halftime show could get me excited because I didn't know that they could do something like this. I mean, they could. They just didn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, did you guys know that you could do this? But yeah, I'm just ready for them to get progressively blacker over the years. I feel like that's not going to happen. Hey, Colin. Let me have this. They, well... No, I feel like the NFL might allow it because they can profit off of black bodies all they want. And then, yeah, yeah so maybe. Well, yeah, I know it's because it's in Inglewood. Like when they go to freaking Texas and Minnesota and all that, they're probably going to white it up like they normally do. Not even say like they normally do because they have black people pretty often. Like, yeah. I think The Weeknd did the last one. I think that was the last one. Yeah, The Weeknd. Yeah. yeah. But that was the one where he was walking through like a hall of mirrors looking on. I thought that was the VMAs. No, no he like started the Super Bowl halftime show running through a hall of mirrors. Oh, yeah, people dressed like the tethered from us. It was very yeah. strange. But yeah, I'm just here for it. I'm super here for I'm it. I'm just I'm waiting for uh it'll be twenty twenty three when Kanye will come out standing for forty five minutes and then leave. <laughs> Yo, if they ever let Kanye do a halftime show, I am one hundred percent here just to see what happens. It's gonna be ridiculous. He's gonna start like reading a manifesto. <laughs> see that people just running laps around the stage. People are gonna shout out like, "Where's the music?" They'll just be like, "Nah, music is the poison. I'm the cure or some shit." Like, it's gonna float up into the the rapture. Guys, that's gonna be the rapture. It'll He's be gonna leave just him. The reverse of when Lady Gaga came down into yep, the Super Bowl. Exactly. Uh, he's well. He's gonna do that. That's gonna be the whole thing. He just for like a minute just goes up. People are gonna be like, "Is it coming back?" No, that's it. <laughs> We've got to get away. That's from the this show. Conversation. <laughs> that's it. You made uh. your choice. Kanye for halftime show 2023. Let's do it. All right, moving on. 
<laughs> oh man, let's uh, let's move on to uh, oh my gosh. So HBO released. This is like the latest news for us. Yes. Um, HBO released trailers for well, a trailer for House of the Dragon and a clip for Peacemaker. Let's get this shit. <laughs> All right, Demi. Let's continue our conversation from earlier. How do you feel about House of the Dragon? Yeah. Um, Hold I'm, on, I'm sorry. Not certain. Before you guys do that, I just want to say, I looked at my phone earlier mm. and I had. 94 <laughs> messages in the group chat. Yeah. And I saw that it started with the trailer. Uh-huh. And I just thought these niggas been talking about Did <laughs> you forget how for many 94 messages? Did you forget how many feelings we all have about that show? I can't. My phone would let me. <laughs> it's like yeah, this guy's been going in. Yes. But yeah, continue. When Game of Thrones is involved, there are strong emotions oh, yeah. to be felt. Okay, Not first of all, ones, first, <laughs> off the top, off the top, off the top, off the top. Yes. I was looking at the Wikipedia for the show, and it had all the cast list, and I don't know who's who, but, like, why you gotta have the one Asian name in the cast list be some exotic foreigner? Because <laughs> that's what Game of Thrones does. I get it. You already have the island with all the black people. I understand. But mm. I think there were some Asian people over there, too. You could have done better. Uh, the Summer Isles are, are known for the black people. That's the summer I was where the black people are. I don't it's know like if they're the, anywhere else. The District 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. You know. Anyway, how do you feel? Yeah, I have very strong feelings about the way Game of Thrones ended. Mostly the last three episodes. The first three episodes of season eight, I'm fine with. It was the last three that really hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, House of the Dragon. I, I understand that the same people who worked on Game of Thrones are not working on this show. Well, some are. Some are, yes. Like the showrunner directed a bunch of episodes of game of thrones and that's fine but if we're talking like well we know those hoes no they're not working on they're this not way. and uh i i have concerns i have doubts um hmm. yeah like i'm gonna i'm probably gonna check it out just as, i can't say that i'm like super excited about it okay not as excited as i was when they first announced it back when before season eight was coming out yeah when you still had hope yeah yeah i can't say i'm as excited and especially as somebody who was a daenerys targaryen fan Oh, honey. I have a question. What's up, dude? Yes. Colin, do you anticipate a lot of incest in this show? Absolutely, 100%. The Targaryens are known for a few things. They're known for dragons. They're known for madness. They're known for incest. That's kind of their brand in a nutshell. So, yes, uh, I'm pretty sure there is some incest within the main characters who are being played in this show. Like, I think between the siblings. Anyway. Uh, Yeah, because I was a huge Danny fan. So, you know. That's basically the only reason I have any kind of attachment to the show. And Danny's not going to be on it. So See, Okay, this is the thing that is kind of mind-boggling to me. It's like, on the one hand, you know, we were talking about it earlier, and I was saying this feels like the easiest thing. It's like, oh, well, people like the Targaryens, so let's make a Targaryen show. Absolutely. Except people don't know who the hell these people are. All they know is that they share the last name. And knowing that they share the last name doesn't make me interested in them because also, once you tell me that it's 200 years before, I know she's not going to show up. No, she's not. not well, it's like I said, it's the reputation of the Targaryens that really is going to draw people in. They made a reputation for them on that show because of their madness. It's what you said. The madness. The dragons. That's what the people want. And the incest. There it is. That the, is I don't know honestly, if they want that part. <laughs> well, I know, but that is part of the Targaryen legacy. And one could argue that that is part of the madness because incest can do weird things genetically. So you could. So I've heard. Like maybe that's why Eris was mad, or maybe he was just mad. I don't know. But it's like, I guess I don't understand why they picked what they did. Because the Targaryens are the most interesting family. Right, that you but could if you choose. wanted to do Targaryens, you could do Eris the Second. And if you did Eris the Second, you could tie in Jamie Lannister. You could tie in characters people know. I don't think that they want to do that though. I think that the point was to get far away from the main timeline while still having the brand recognition of a name. See, okay, if that's what it is, then I applaud them because I would not expect them to do that. I would expect them to be too afraid to move away from it, to have sort of... It's kind of like... This is such a bad reference. I'm so sorry for what I'm about to do. It's kind of like the fact that J.K. Rowling still hasn't made anything related to the Marauders. But it would be easy, Mm. and people would want to see it. Well, no. See, I feel like that's different, because the Marauders feels to me like we know so much about them already that we don't need Mm. to go into their past. But there are details that you can add into it. And the same thing could be said about the Game of Thrones people that we already know in the past before that's happened. Yeah, It's a a similar situation. Mm, And then now we've got Fantastic Beasts, which is almost similar to let's go 200 years back into the past of Game of Thrones and focus on other people. Yes. Okay. When you pitch it that way, oof. Yeah, okay. 
it's interesting because it's different. I just, I don't, I don't know. To me, it feels like one way to make Game of Thrones less interesting is to tell me it's the political drama that you love, except it's only one family now. Like, God, I don't care. <laughs> the multiple families was what made it so interesting. I mean, I'm sure that there will be other families, but the Targaryens will be the central well, focus. Well, one can hope. There are, some people are saying we might see Dorne because there's that whole thing that the Targaryens could never conquer Dorne because they suck and Dorne is great. And they've got some Lannisters on the show. Yeah, that's... They've got other families. It's just that the Targaryens will definitely be the central focus because the Targaryens are dramatic. So is everybody. That's the point. But like... But they are super dramatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is definitely going to be one. I don't think I'm going to check it out when it comes out. I will wait for you to see it and for you to tell me what you think. Or I I might just read Fire and Blood before it comes out and then be a snob about it like I can be. Yeah, I'm just one of those people who's like, yeah, I'll check it out. I'm going to give it like an episode or, well, I typically have a, I have a rule of three. Three episode test. Yeah, Yeah. I have a three episode test. So I'll probably watch like the first three episodes and and see what's popping and see if I like it. But yeah, like what's, what's driving me so far is that it's indirectly associated with Daenerys Targaryen, who was my favorite Game of Thrones character. I want you to do me a favor. Yeah. Count the people of color. So far, I think there's two. Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah. Oh man, Greta Gerwig, you better step your game up. They got you beat. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since we've done that. Uh, but other than that, like we said, HBO also released a clip for Peacemaker. This is yeah. a conversation for me in Dallas. I think it just looks so silly, and I love it. James it's, Gunn at his finest. He's so ridiculous. John Cena. I love John Cena. He completely commits to whatever ridiculous thing you need him to do. Yes. And that pretty much sums up Peacemaker. Like he's played two very different characters this year. It's very interesting. What did he play this year? Because he played Dom's brother in Fast oh, and Furious. Yeah. Yes, that was also this year. This year feels so long, and it feels like we've had so many movies. <laughs> um, Wait, Fast Nine was this year? Yes. <laughs> what? It's one of the first movies in theaters. Wild. Also, he was in a third movie. He's in a movie with uh, Little Rel Howery. So I think it's a Hulu movie. Oh, the one that's on. Friends. Yeah, the streaming one. Yeah, yeah, I keep getting ads for that one. So yeah, he's been he's been busy. Doing but, all kind of silliness. Yeah, Peacemaker. They they released a clip. It's super funny. Yeah. Super He's James great. Gunn humor. I'm glad they brought back all the, I don't know what you, worker drones from. Yeah, from the Suicide Waller's Squad. Office. Yeah. Danielle Brooks is on the show, and I, I've heard that she's really great from, I think she's in Orange is the New Black. Cool. I've heard good things. Which, was she tasty, maybe? Because if so, if that's what I'm thinking of, yeah, she was great from the seasons that I watched. She is tasty. You are correct. Yeah. Oh, her. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it, she got was it. great in the seasons that I watched. So, yeah. I've seen her gift reactions, and she's great on those. <laughs> yeah, I am looking forward to it because I like cape shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks funny and it looks ridiculous, and I'm sure it's going to be violent. Like everything I liked about Peacemaker and the movie, I'm sure I'm going to get in the show. So I'm ready for it. They changed up his helmet. It looks better this time around. I think. I didn't even notice. I was just like, okay, it's shiny and it's big and it's goofy. So. Uh, I think there were some comments on the video that were talking about like they changed up the design of the helmet. Got it. Which it looks cool. I'm wondering what we're going to get. I'm hoping that we can get some cameos from other characters. I just want Ratcatcher back. She's a sweetheart. I think I'm just... I understand if we can't get Bloodsport back. I can understand it. I, I just... understand it, but I don't like it. Because my favorite we... thing about the movie was John Cena and Idris Elba playing off each other. They were so good. And their ridiculous interactions you guys can check out our review for that movie by the way true it's great because we're great yeah i understand if we can't get waller back because viola davis is viola davis yeah she got stuff to do probably can't get harley because you know margot robbie is margot robbie but you know (laughs) don't get somebody it'll be good either way yeah i'm I'm expecting that the show is gonna be good like i said james gunn's signature humor and he's really good at the action stuff i think this is his first tv show which would be Uh, interesting maybe Sure. Let's say yes. I'm pretty sure it's his first TV show. Yeah. So research is for squares. Interesting. I'm interested to see what what he does with a long form storytelling. Yeah, I'm curious to see how much patience I have for a character like Peacemaker. Oh yeah. Especially being the lead and the titular character, because I don't think I'll get tired of him because I love John Cena and his ridiculousness. But maybe I'll be surprised. The person that he is is uh, not somebody that we would like typically. No. If it was not John Cena. But he has a pet eagle, and that's great. Name Eagley. Yeah, it comes out, I think you said January, January. 2022? Yeah, so a few months. Coming soon, that's like the first, that's the first DC HBO Max show that we're getting associated with the DCEU. Not the first DC HBO Max show, because right. I'm currently watching Doom and Patrol. They've had a, a few of them. <laughs> but yeah, I'm ready for it. Last piece of news, which also connects to another piece of news. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson settles her lawsuit with Disney, and Tower of Terror is still in the works. 
Good is, for her. Is she in that? She was set to produce it and star in it. Or okay. Produce it at the very least. I couldn't remember. And then the lawsuit happened, yeah. and it was like, <laughs> so surprise, uh, surprise, motherfucker. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. I uh, don't know how I feel about it because I mean, good for her, but. I feel like that could have been the start of something. I feel like it still is. Okay. Because the way that I'm seeing it, because like, yeah, okay. Go with your hands and got her money. In a sense, that does not affect me. I I think uh, the fourth time I went to go see Black Widow, Somebody was like, are you trying to help her paycheck? And I went, no, because Scarlett Johansson doesn't need me to help her paycheck. I need her to help my paycheck. <laughs> because here's the thing. This is not just a A-list star mm-hmm. issue, as right. we are coming to find right now. Yeah. Um, which is why the other couple of weeks ago when you and Gabby were talking about like industry business stuff and I wasn't there, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I wish I had been there. Which uh, also, I was not speaking broadly about the industry. But now we are. I was talking about this one woman and this one company. But her story is part of a bigger problem. Right. Which is as, well, first off, the best part about this news for me is that Tower of Terror is still in the works. <laughs> I just wanted to see Scarlett produce some more stuff with Disney. But the bigger part of this is the fact that it's not just A-list stars who are having issues. Currently, if you are not aware, the IATSE members have voted to authorize a nationwide film and TV production strike. That's going to be interesting. Hell yeah. Hell Um, yeah. Colin is uh, an avid ally and supporter. My thing is... Colin hates TV and movies. I have been thinking for a while that the TV and movie industry are, to put it bluntly, fucked up. (laughs) And it's normalized. You know, because... You, to me, have told me, and I've heard from other people, it's like, oh, I worked a 12-hour day, a 14-hour day, and it's like, that's not that's normal. cool. Right. That shouldn't be normal. You shouldn't have to work those days. You should work fewer hours than that just for your own well-being. Yeah. And the fact that it's normalized, and I think it's a lot of the same, because this is the same issue you run into in, in video games as well. People talk about, I've worked 13-hour yeah. days, and the whole idea is you're working on something so cool, you're so lucky to be in this position yeah. that you do what you got to do, and you learn to just deal with it. And it's like, but also you could work less and be healthier and be safer and still get the thing done and still have right, this and cool still position. still work on that thing without being yeah. a slave. So, so that's why this strike excites me so much if it happens because you can still do the thing you love and you can still have that job just in a way that is better for you overall, health-wise. Like, yes, good, yes. Yeah, and for those who don't know, uh, IATSE stands for International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. They have recently voted to strike if their demands are not met. They want better pay for streaming service work. They want higher wages for coordinators and assistants on all productions, longer rest periods between shifts and on weekends, and strengthen requirements for meal breaks during marathon shoots. The reason I say that this is part of a, Scarlett Johansson's issue was part of a grander issue was because her entire lawsuit was basically that Disney breached her contract by putting it on streaming and therefore she was not going to get the money that she was supposed to be paid had it only released in theaters. Um, People are saying that Shang-Chi just kind of proved her case, which is probably why they settled. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, streaming, the industry is currently, you know, it's changed so much and it's changing like now rapidly. There is a shift in the industry because streaming has become so popular. And when these contracts were first drawn up, it was when streaming was experimental. Mm -hmm. We didn't know if streaming was going to work. Now we know yeah, it is. Ex- it's definitely working. It's and work- been new for a little while now, like yeah, for years. It's- yeah, I'm honestly surprised. Not surprised because, you know, why would they do something that benefits other people? But, like, why wasn't this addressed in the contract already? So the contract, the last time they drew up this contract, I, I want to say that I read it was 10 years ago when oh it was God. still fresh. When streaming was still kind of experimental, they were like, cool, this is what we're going to do. This is what your contract is. And now they're tr- now it's time for them to redraw the contract. And they're like, okay, this is no longer experimental. Yeah. We know it works. You guys basically just swept the award shows at the Emmys. So pay us what we're due. And A-list stars, we're seeing that that's also an issue with them as well. Mm-hmm. Because we, like we saw, Scarlett Johansson just sued Disney. Disney had to change their contracts with stars like Emma Stone. They yeah. probably changed their contracts with Emily Blunt and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. HBO Max had its own controversy when it decided to do the day and date releases because they didn't contact their talent about Mm. 
paying them properly now that they were putting it on streaming. Streaming has changed everything so much that now the industry is in a shift. Mm -hmm. And that's why when Scarlett did her lawsuit, I was like, important, Uh because it's not just the A-list stars who are going through this. If they're going through this, imagine what the lower level people are going through. Right. And that's important to me because I actually do work in this industry. I right. actually just finished working on a TV show last week. You are the lower level people. That you're I am about. the lower level. <laughs> and it's not just that too either. There are also the the writers, those authors that are currently asking for their residuals from Disney that have oh, been Oh yeah, yet. Disney must pay thing. Yeah. Ooh, yes. And they backed up Scarlett Johansson's suit. Like it's a whole thing. It's not just people who are making millions. That's uh, an oversimplification. It is literally the entire industry that is currently going hey we're in a shift that means all of us need to change the way that this works so pay us properly give us our proper breaks we have to do this the right way and we need to do it better so that all of us are healthy and working efficiently that would be ideal (laughs) (laughs) it would be ideal like that's the thing is it it just bothers me that there are industries where it's like this job is cool and you're lucky to have it and therefore you have to put up with crappy working conditions i mean learn to put up with crappy working conditions but yeah so that's my soapbox for the day (laughs) um they just recently voted yes to strike 90 percent of the of the union voted and they voted 98 percent yes and that was because i was reading a little bit about it before the vote and what i was reading was saying like it obviously they're going to vote yes because that's where the direction is going but what matters is how many people vote and the fact that almost the entire guild voted and so overwhelmingly that's impressive yeah i think they said the last time they had a vote like this like 30 percent less people voted yeah. overall oh so people the people care about this yeah people voted voted this time people are tired <laughs> i haven't uh, seen my family in weeks probably literally yeah um but yeah if they end up striking if the amp tp which I now feel like I need to give the, uh, there's so many acronyms, the Alliance of motion picture and television producers. That's who they are currently uh, negotiating with. If they don't meet their demands, well then there will be a TV and movie production strike and basically everything will shut down because your crew is the most important. And that's the thing that we're talking about, right? We're talking about like, because before we had a writer strike, this is like crew. This is like this gaffers is, yeah. and this camera is, operators <laughs> and the is, people who are making it. The people who Literally are doing the, the heavy people who lifting. Are making the, wow, that's so awesome. <laughs> the people who are doing heavy lifting are like, nah, fam, pay us. Fuck you, pay me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Uh, uh, I support them because, like I said, I'm one of those lower winded people. And I wonder, people. you know, about things like this because I think about. On a sort of tangent, but not really. The there was that whole strike. Nabisco workers were striking, and when that ended, because Nabisco gave into their demands, we found out that they were only asking for like a sixty cent per hour raise, and what? Nabisco was like not going to give them that. And it's just <laughs> like, what the hell? The lengths that big organizations and companies will go to to not give you something that they wouldn't even miss. Nabisco. Yeah, that was the whole thing. Eat these crackers, nigga. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, take some freaking cookies. But you get free Oreos, you're fine. Yeah, Yeah, we're under, I think, I feel like we're seeing a shift in all sorts of industries right now when it comes to payment. You know, we've seen what unemployment rates have been like. Yo, this pandemic really opened some people's eyes, bro. That's good. That's what, like, I'm glad that some of that is happening because I was really worried that with the pandemic, people would be like, oh, we're just going to get back to how it was before the pandemic and nothing's going to change. But like, no, if anything, this is a way to see that things need to change. So this strike is an indication of that. So when we have to eat the rich, Colin, uh-huh. if you have to pick a billionaire to eat, which one do you pick? Oh, uh, ooh, I'm going to say, okay, hmm. see, it's tough because I think for the world, it would be better to eat Bezos, hmm. but Musk is insufferable with what he says, hmm. so I might be more tempted to go for him. To me, same question. Uh, I can't answer that question. I don't understand it enough to really give an answer. If you okay, had to, so choose, you a to choose a billionaire to consume. To eat. eat. I, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. My follow-up oh, question would be Colin. Who do you, never mind. I'm also going to put uh, Bill Gates on the list because of the whole vaccine thing. That was partially his fault. Mm. So, uh, you know, I got options. You had a follow-up question, Dallas? I thought I did. And no, I, I just, realized I don't. No, I just, I want to make sure that, you know, if you have questions. I hope people understand when we're joking. Because it's really hard to tell when of we're course. not on camera. 
Oh, yeah, because, you know, making jokes about cannibalism, people are going to think that's serious. I'm not, <laughs> Shut up, I'm not trying to end up like Army Hammer, bro. I do not endorse <laughs> cannibalism. I'm not a cannibal. I'm not going to eat anybody. Yo, why did I forget he exists until you just said that? I think it's better that way. <laughs> okay, so for the FBI agent who watches me, the fact that I bought a sticker that says Eat the Rich, it wasn't for me, first of all. But that doesn't actually mean anything. Don't look into it. Oh, they're going to get you. Oh, I'm, I'm They're going to have the clip of this part. They're like, Mr. Bezos, we believe there's been a threat on your life. <laughs> I'm about to get, like, oh. killed by an Amazon drone. I feel like it's only appropriate that we're discussing eating people on a podcast about venom. That's you know true. what? Tying it back in. All oh, right. Circle. Thank oh, you guys good. for listening. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much for putting up with us. Tune in next time for another late review of No Time to Die. Well, I mean, I guess it's as late as it's been since it, you know, was never going to come out. Exactly. The movie's late. The review can be That's late. the thing is, does it matter? The movie's late. The <laughs> review is late. If anything, we're on brand for that specific movie. Also, also, also. Also. We'll also be re- reviewing What If and Ted Lasso. Oh, Those Jesus. won't be late because they end. I feel like you will be September. reviewing Ted Lasso. At this rate, we might not see Gabby again for a while. That's oh, boy. True. All right, well, I'll hold it down for the Ted Lasso. Ted fans. Lasso's about to be hits what you've been watching. <laughs> <laughs> and to me and I will do what if. And Colin will also chill. be here. Because <laughs> I ain't seen none of that. And I don't think I'm going to. Also, by the time this episode comes out, my birthday will have passed. Hey, hey. she old. So are you guys are older than me. Shh, we don't talk about that. I'm literally the youngest in the group. Uh, we don't talk about that. She is literally the youngest in the group. Shh. <laughs> yes, this episode will be coming out the day after my birthday. Yeah, so wish to me a happy birthday. The reason why the Bond review is going to be so late is because I'm celebrating me. <laughs> exactly, as you should. Give yourself your flowers. Speaking of giving people flowers, Crown Digital, thank you so much. Brandon and I, you put us on Spotify, you put us on Apple Podcasts. Demi, thank you. You edit, you put us on YouTube. You're the below the line worker that we need please don't go on strike we can't afford to pay you anyway and thank you for repping for the dear white people because it takes me forever to get the shows on my list and i still haven't watched it you better hurry up we have like two months until we got to do our favorite top 10 shows this, of the year the end of the year is such a like terrifying time for me i haven't finished my show <laughs> oh my god colin thank you for hopping on the venom train with me yes that's how i phrase that we are moving on venom so hmm? are you on the venom train are you riding the train? When you say riding the train. He didn't say he was riding his tongue. Mm. I didn't say that either. What the fuck is wrong <laughs> with you? Oh, my God. To me. I don't know. You were implying something. There, I buddy. was. That's on you. You read into my words. Speaking of making things nasty. Nah. <laughs> there we go. Gabby, we miss you. We hope you can be in an episode soon. Oh, also, announcement on that front. Gabby might be writing a romance novel. Stay tuned for details. Ooh. If she ever comes back. <laughs> I'm not giving those details because she'd yell at me if I did. Gabby's going to be the new Zane. I can't wait. Yes. <laughs> anyway, audience, what do you think of Venom? Let there be carnage. Are you excited for House of the Dragon? Are you ready for another rape and incest power hour? Let us know in the comments. Or God, hit us. when you say it like that. Yeah, it's just so I mean, accurate. I don't want to watch it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the second half, he's definitely right. That's going to happen. Yes. We can only hope the first half doesn't. I hope it doesn't. I'm not even going to watch the show, and I just hope it doesn't happen. Honestly, we yeah, we don't. Um, but we, yeah. We don't need it anymore, guys. We never we, needed we it. Never it was never a need. <laughs> never, never needed. Like, you could have just been fine with, like, we'll show you titties every once in a while. Right. That would have been fine. I am all about it. You guys, implying subtlety is sometimes a good way to go exactly. about it. Exactly. Right. But anyway, yeah, hit us up on Twitter at y'all underscore different, Instagram and Tumblr at Creative Differences Podcast, or Facebook.com slash Creative Differences PC. If you want to bond with me over a mutual love of this new Venom movie, hit me up on Twitter and or Instagram at a king named Simba. It turns out that I still do have a lot of opinions about Game of Thrones. I didn't think I did, but then we started about talking about House of the it's Dragon. It's because we don't talk we about are. it anymore, so now yes. it's just in there. Yes, but if you want to talk to me about those opinions, you can find me on Twitter at Duck McGuck. Hey, guys, you guys will hear from me again, I guess, when we do uh, our No Time to Die review because I'm one of the few people who's actually going to go see it in this group. And you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm currently going through a James Bond watch, and you guys can contact me on Twitter at Dreamy Films, D-R-E-E-M-I. Same with Instagram. Thank you guys for joining us. And if you would like to find Gabby, you can find her on Twitter at Vormi Venom, all one word. If you don't know what that means, just that's fine. I have never loved you more. <laughs> Is there a burner account just in case? Uh, 
Nope. All right. <laughs> it's been different. Bye. She gonna kill you.